Hey everybody, JPC here. I want to go over my Appalachian Trail gear list and all the essential items that I'm going to take with me. Now it's random. I'm going to grab different pieces of gear, explain what it is. There might be some things I take with me that I don't show today. However, this is essentially what I am taking. So before I get started, go ahead and get the laughs out. If you think this hat's funny, I love it because it's cool. K-U-H-L. But let's go ahead and get under the armor. Yeah, looking for sponsorships. <clears throat> Enough of that. Let's get started. My pack. I went with the Osprey Ether 70 liter pack. This is phenomenal. There's so many compartments and storage space in this pack. I really have enjoyed playing around with stacking my gear inside, wearing it, testing the size. It's been fantastic. Every time I hike, I always carry a safety whistle. This is a storm whistle. It's one of my favorite things to carry, one of the loudest in the world. But most packs nowadays, Osprey, North Face, always come in with a built-in whistle on the chest strap, which is right here. Not bad, but I love to have a secondary whistle, all right? Great pack, Osprey. <clears throat> Trekking poles. These are black diamond carbon fiber with a cork handle. So when you sweat, you get a good grip. You don't get chafing on your hands. But black diamond is a phenomenal company. And I'll tell you, I used to be the type of guy who did not like trekking poles to hike. But I've come to learn to enjoy and appreciate them, especially with downhill. If you are a hiker and you hike quite a bit, downhill is your enemy. So many injuries happen with downhill, and on the first day, anyone can hike when they're fresh. It's the fifth day, the fifth week, where your knees start to give you problems going downhill, and these are lifesavers. Another thing that I bring when I do hike is I bring knee braces. And when I go down quite a bit of descents, I put these knee braces on, and they've saved my knees quite a bit. When you go in different areas where you have high, high altitude, high elevation, once you get to that point you tend to stay at that level for a while so your knees might not be challenged but when you're at lower elevations like the PCT higher elevation you stay there for a while in the Sierra Nevadas as you get on the Appalachian Trail there's a lot of roller coaster ascents and descents and that can really affect your knees so the trekking poles are great all right hydration key factor right as long as you have a great hydration source good shoes you should be able to survive carry a three liter bladder this is from Osprey, goes in my pack. Three liter is essential. Um, in addition to that, I always carry an extra water bottle, right? 32 ounces. It goes in one of the extra storage compartments in my pack, literally this close to where I can grab it. Another thing that is great about these types of water bottles is if you boil water and put it in this bottle, stick it in your sleeping bag on a cold night, it definitely will warm your bag, which is great. I also carry my own water purification system by Catadyne. This is Swiss made. This is a fantastic piece of equipment. It'll last forever. And also some iodine tablets that I carry in my own first aid kit. And speaking of that, there's so many on the market, but I choose to just carry and make my own. I just grab a regular toiletry hygiene bag and ace bandages, neosporin, blister kits, multivitamins, Dayquil, ibuprofen, uh, glucosamine, chondritin for joint health, Vaseline. Why is this important? Chafing. Again, I mentioned it earlier, when you hike fresh, it's one thing, but on the fifth day or fifth week, if you have the experience in chafing, you're gonna need what you, you know, Vaseline or talcum powder, something that allows you to stay in the game. It can be a huge problem. <clears throat> Stove jet boil and this thing compacts so tight to where when you put it in your pack it's well contained my utensils that come with it and this small propane canister this is good for 100 boils some of the things that you cook aside from you know whatever you decide to make while you're out there in the woods on your own and your own chef mountain house food fantastic great company Open this thing up, bowl of water, pour it in, ready to eat. Then you don't have to clean your own equipment. One thing I don't have experience in, this is all new to me, is a bear canister. So two options, 
in bear country. And black bears are quite common on the Appalachian Trail in every state. Either a bear canister or a bear bag where you launch a rope over a tree limb, hoist it up into the air, and that's your protection. But this is not scent proof, but you can sit on it like a stool, carry four to seven days worth of food inside of this, and when you sleep at night, you store it away from your tent. Never keep your food source in your tent. And that's how you prevent any bears around you. Hiking shoes. I typically wear Solomon high ankle supported shoes. But this time, I went with the Ultra Lone Peaks, right? Or Long Peak, I think. Yeah, Lone Peaks. These are uh, very comfortable. I've worn them a while, the last few weeks, to kind of break them in. I also have some Solomon low ankle supported shoes too um, these are great sleeping bag this sleeping bag is great for a side sleeper too um, made by Nemo equipment it's good for 15 degrees Fahrenheit for a comfortable sleep my big Agnes tent this is a two-person tent very easy to set up very happy with it it comes with a floor footprint. Lay this down first and the tent on top. I've set this up in under two minutes and not even rushing. So it's a very good piece of equipment. And then here's my air mattress, which inflates relatively quick. Comes with an additional bag. Instead of manually doing it, use the bag to compress the air, roll it up, and it inflates in no time. I purchased this book and I've used it to actually plan the last few months, but I also downloaded an application onto my phone that has all this in a PDF file. So um, before I get on the trail, using this for mailing packages to a PO box that I want to send myself ahead of time, or how long it takes to get from one shelter to the next, the history of the Appalachian Trail, very good book. this this head net now or head here it is head net small easy compact for mosquitoes this is louisiana i'm in mosquito heaven now in the appalachian trail during certain months of the year i know mosquitoes are horrific and even if you walk they're all around you swarming you hiking with this makes a difference obviously you need a torch um, i have a good headlamp and i carry a handheld torch, both by Surefire. Surefire is my favorite. Hasn't let me down, either battery or rechargeable. And if you need a recharge, I carry this pack solar panel, which on the Appalachian Trail I might not have a lot of luck with, but this lasts six hours to charge any of my devices. A good knife, this is a Gerber Tanto, right? Always has been very faithful to me as long as I've carried them. Rain equipment, rain gear, good rain jacket. Always carry a good rain jacket. But what I've learned in the desert and in places where it rains a lot, I carry an umbrella too. Yeah, it sounds comical. But on my pack, I will bungee cord my umbrella on my pack strap. And I'll hike under an umbrella. It makes a big difference when you're out there for a long period of time. Um, I think that is about it that I want to cover. So a place to sleep, a place to sleep in, how to cook my food, how to protect my food, good shoes, hydration source. I've got everything I need. Now, my warming layers, my gloves, all of those things, no need to go over that. But this is my Appalachian Trail big item gear list. Again, JPC, thanks again for your time. We'll see you on the trail. Shout out. Death Wish Instant Coffee, strongest coffee on the planet.